What's up, what's up, you guys? Your girl G here, and I'm coming to talk to you guys really fast about Real Housewives. Let's try that again. I'm coming to talk to y'all about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. But there was a lot to get into um, this finale, even though the finale, like it seems like it really kind of wasn't like a lot um, because it really just was about, um, you know, Kyle's white party, which y'all, we have got to say, this has probably been one of the biggest, if not the biggest parties that we have seen on Real Housewives, period. Um, you know, Kyle, you know, actually throughout the duration of her being a housewife, she, you know, has always thrown really, you know, good parties um that's what we try to see when we when we watch these you know housewives shows in particular i've been watching you know the rich white women for a minute you know other people's just not catching on but you know they gonna throw they gonna throw a little shindig okay and that's what kyle did so yeah you guys let's go ahead and get to the episode so uh, like i said y'all really wasn't too much it opened up um with kyle you know planning you know she basically uh because of the Super Bowl commercial she did with Sophie or Sofa or whatever, um, they basically let her have the the football stadium. And so she was like, you know, the white party's a big deal. You know, let's go big or whatever. And so she's got, um, I think his name is like Johnny Lee or something like that. And I remember him from like way, way, way early, you know, Housewives, Beverly Hills Day. Obviously, like, obviously y'all saw he, they did the flashback when, you know, VP was on the show um that's the thing everybody's like you know whispering like would lvp return um next season i mean it wouldn't be a bad jump because we haven't seen her in years and her and kyle fell out because of the whole puppy gate you know for those who remember um and you know now that she's going through this divorce and stuff i wonder if you know lvp has reached out or said anything but nonetheless um uh, you know, I, I, I know the, the dude that, uh, you know, I've seen him before. I think it's Johnny Chan or something, Lee or, or Lee, something like that from, you know, LVP. But nonetheless, he's like, more is more is more. And the fact that they have damn near a, a half a million dollar budget, $400,000, I think it said, and it looked every bit of it too. You know, it's one thing where you see a budget and then, it's like, oh, it like, is it going to really look like that? You know, there's a such thing as balling on a budget. You know, if you know where you really ain't got the money like that. And so you try to make it, you know, work what it is. But then it's like, if you got the budget and it still don't turn out, you know, it still turned out a hot mess. Then it's kind of like, girl, what did you do with this money? And there is no denying that that party was every bit of that money. Okay. But yeah, so she was playing at a party. Um, after that, we see Dorit. She's talking with PK. He basically extended his trip in London. PK been in London like Curtis been in the DR on Married to Medicine. And he just stayed there. And so we obviously know now that they uh, filed to be separated. But it's just kind of like, dang, like what is going on? But you obviously know that, okay, Dorit, Dorit, after the, you know, the robbery and things like that, she developed a, a heightened level of PTSD. But PK also knows his wife is a little bit dramatic. <laughs> so for him, he's like, I don't know where to tote the line of like, this is really her PTSD or is this her just being, you know, Dorit? Because Dorit sometimes is a lot and so it's just kind of like you know you obviously want to express you know sympathy for her but I it definitely is though it's a problem that PK is gone like that and you really not hanging around your kids like that like at all like when I saw at the end of the episode that he was gone 39 days because he extended his trip I'm like first of all what kind of job do you have I've heard of being gone you know like two weeks six weeks but that is crazy um but yeah um uh yeah so Dorit's just kind of upset with him being gone um uh Erica she is uh I think practicing or whatever y'all I watched this episode like one time so if I missed something because it really wasn't a lot like I said um I apologize um Kyle did ask Erica to um perform at the party you know it was kind of like Erica's you know 
kind of like entryway back into, you know, being on the stage. Cause remember she, um, just signed for the Vegas residency anyway. So, you know, Erica's just trying to get her life back on track because boy, when you say her life went on a detour, <laughs> cause Tom, you know, Tom, he did his, he did all his dirt and then basically got scapegoated cause his ass went into dementia, early onset dementia and, and Alzheimer's. And so it's like, he literally got to miss all of the, the, the chaoticness because he was incapacitated and so erica was left to literally deal with all this shit on her own but um yeah so she's performing and so that's good um sudden y'all said went on a little shopping spree y'all I, first of all i love sudden, sudden ever since she came on um the show i just loved how like like almost like just uh, quirky is the word like awkward in like the right ways is a word and I just love the the relationship that her and Garcelle have um but yeah sudden she went out and her daughter Porter is back and you know she just wanted to spoil her daughter for a little bit she been gone so they go in there and baby went on a shopping spree he looking looking at four hundred thousand dollars and see the thing is it's different when we be on the shows like we were watching the shows and you know you just sightseeing to sightsee you you know you window shopping you really can't afford the shit but you just trying it on just so you can feel fab for a day but when you're watching somebody who actually got it like that you really are thinking like ooh, like what's she gonna get and so in my mind i'm like okay let's see how much money Sutton gonna spend because we know she got it so it's like they showed her um like a four hundred thousand dollar bracelet but they ended up settling on some earrings that were like 60 grand. And then her daughter picked um, a, a bracelet or, or some studs too that were like 40 grand. And the way it said, she was like, I want that one. She was like, okay. And it was just like, see, just ooh, living the rich white woman lifestyle, okay? But I really did love having that moment of sudden just kind of talking with her daughter um because you know the truth is we really don't see those type of like real ass conversations like with women like that um where they truly I mean we do but not to the extent of like where you are kind of have that moment where your daughter in just life where you have to have a realistic conversation with them where it's like I loved how Sutton explained it she was like do all of the things you know be married, have kids, you know, fall in love, experience all of those things, but just never lose who you are in the process. Because Sutton's like, I did that shit. She's like, I gave up everything. And like, li imagine Lixie having to ask for permission to spend money. Like, I need to ask for an allowance, essentially. Being at somebody else's, you know, beck and call and regard, y'all, that's not, that's not a comfortable way, like, to live. And so um, she, I know Sutton kind of feels like um, in her mind, it is a thing also too, with like, I'm imagine like being a mother and you know, your kids are watching you basically just like disintegrate in front of them, you know, because, you know, as kids, you do notice what happens. And a lot of these Negroes, y'all want to sit here and be cognitive, you know, dissonance when it comes to how y'all's actions are affecting the household. And so it's like, we see I know it's from my own experience as a kid like because my parents got divorced and it's like you watch and see how literally the as your mom like as time goes on the light just gets dimmer and dimmer it really does and as kids we see it and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that because if you're a woman and you saw more for yourself than being a stay-at-home mom it don't sit right with your soul. And so you are literally just dying on the inside. And, you know, I'm sudden, I think just wants to make sure her daughter doesn't have that feeling. And I can appreciate that. Um, because it's like giving up your independence is you can't do it. <laughs> you can't trust these. <laughs> what you're going to say? Can't trust. No, no. Can't trust. No. What's what that Trina? I don't know if that was Trina, but yeah can't trust these niggas, okay um but yeah moving on um what else happened it really was just like the party and everything everybody prepping for the party um uh garcelle she was uh kiki with her hairstylist and they she was talking about like oh yeah erica's performing tonight and um i guess denise has mentioned something like oh uh she's like you can have a residency like when you're not singing or something like that and showing up Denise said that at the at the party too 
Um, but yeah, like the party was super amazing. Everybody shows up. Anne Marie's dressed for cute. Of all the people, like or all the girls, y'all, Crystal. Actually, I really did actually enjoy that dress on Crystal. Um, I didn't mind Garcelle's look. Um, uh, Erica, she wore her performance thing, which it was cute. Kyle looked really good. Dorit and eh, eh. um and Sutton looks really good y'all Sutton has been definitely stepping up her fashion game she definitely has um Sutton talks to Garcelle because everybody's showing up to the party now and everybody's just like literally in awe because y'all it really was in the middle of a football stadium in like the floor uh when oh dude the the event planner so called the floor she was like why is there Kyle in the middle <laughs> And he's like, ain't nobody gonna notice it. She's like, oh, really? He's like, how can I not notice this big ass Kyle in the middle of the floor? Um, but yeah, Kyle looked good. Sutton, you know, she was catching up with Dorit. Uh, I mean, Sutton was catching up with Garcelle and just kind of filling her in on on Steve. She's like, yeah, he reached out to me after he ghosted me. And see, when I, I really liked Steve for for Gar for Sutton, but I immediately knew that it wasn't gonna go nowhere because Steve looks like one of those undercover um real undercover like you know uh sleaze balls <laughs> they are boyishly you know handsome with the with the um you know fairly light hair and they have that very inconspicuous look but deep down they you can't trust them and i knew he was just kind of like for the moment entertaining sudden um and I, that's so hard to say, but you know, Sutton took it as like she realized like this. It, I maybe I think Sutton her mind felt like she you know was looking for somebody because I know like especially as women, especially as we're told like as we're older, basically we lose value, and it's just kind of like um you know Sutton realized she's like maybe I was just I think Sutton her mind felt like she needed to like to date, but then she realized like you know I really. I really needed to date like myself, my business. Like I realized maybe that's not really what I was looking for, but it's going to take away from the fact that, you know, she's still, uh, you know, put her foot out there, you know, she's gaining more confidence and it's just like, I really do enjoy Sutton. Um, Crystal, uh, she was there, you know, her and Anne Marie, they was cool finally, but you know, at the reunion, that shit's going to go up and smoke um Denise pulls up uh after Dorit uh Dorit upset because everybody keeps asking where's PK where's PK and she's yeah PK is still in London yeah I know he's still in London I'm sorry doll he's still in London and of course Dorit was upset she's like this is just really unfortunate because eight months ago I told PK about this but he just continues to stay in London and it's like that is really shitty though because like like Doree said she's like I literally told PK about this a while ago and so the fact that he didn't come I can imagine how that very much is hurtful um Mauricio and his little phone is I'll tell you Mauricio oh he make me sick because I know Kyle was putting up with shit with him just y'all we know it like we, we gonna get to that part um yeah Mauricio was over there just walking around the party Kyle in the back getting ready Erica in the back getting ready um Dorit was there oh yeah and then Denise Denise Lord Denise Denise showed up y'all Denise had on white she had it was like a white jacket but like it was a jersey jacket and so when Denise showed up all Dorit like Dorit all she could say was you look so you look so um uh, like a cheerleader and like <laughs> and Doreen didn't know the words to explain the outfit but Denise showed up she said bitch I got enough white on you got to take it um Denise every time she showed up like she always looked like she'd be on that good good scriptions okay that the white women's be having the good scriptions um but yeah everybody's there at the party uh it's time for Erica to perform um she's in the back praying and she's just you know it's like you know this is kind of like her resurgence you know Kyle um you know, she appreciates Kyle for doing this for her because at the end of the day, you know, they have been there for each other. But Erica, y'all, Erica got skinty. I really need Erica to put on like 10 pounds, like 10, 15. Like I get it, lose weight. But like y'all, Erica lost all her ass. She like, y'all, she just too skinny. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but she get on stage y'all and she get to you know performing it was you know nice look you little yang yang definitely one of the better performances of obviously housewives history but of course guess who was there to say some slick shit out her mouth denise 
sitting there talking about, oh, um, a good thing cameras ain't up here, ain't gonna catch her lip singing. And <laughs> it was like, girl, you got all this shit to say right now. Bitch, you ain't gonna say nothing when you see her. You know, I wonder if they would do a cute little snippet of Denise showing up, but yeah, you know, I guess not because they had Big Kathy show up on set instead. And I'm sitting here wondering why is my question. So something gonna have to must be going down. Um, but yeah, yeah, the party was super cute. You know, everybody took their picture um at the end for the night, and obviously, you see the headlines. It's like a month later. Kyla Mauricio split, you know, and it's like all everywhere. And so everybody's kind of like, damn, like, you know, it, it, it is real. Like the rumors got some to it. And so we see the conversation between Garcelle and Sutton and they both would just kind of talk to each other. Like we knew this bitch was up to something. We knew we Sutton's like, I saw it. Like, girl, you wasn't drinking, you working out, you like doing all these things. And I'm sitting here asking, are you okay? And you sitting here lying to me and playing me like I'm dumb. Like Sutton was like, I knew something was up and you trying to make, like get mad at me. And so y'all know Sutton and Garcelle was playing detective. She said, where your wedding ring at? <laughs> um and so yeah um erica pulls up on kyle and you know checks up on her you know she wants to be a good friend of her because erica knows the process of divorce and um you know i really do appreciate like seeing that scene with them like erica did have a real you know like girlfriend you know conversation with kyle and basically was just like you know forget what other people have to say because kyle's thing is like you know it's it finally being on the public you know kyle and mauricio people did view them as like you know this very you know admirable you know housewife couples because usually in this world we don't see you know marriages last long and so y'all they made it damn near 30 years like that really is like to me that is a successful marriage like I I really I do do find that as a success um and to see what they built to like in the 30 years that they've been together like they really when you kind of picture what a more successful looking relationship is like, I feel like that's what it is. Like they literally started with nothing. And now y'all Mauricio got freaking 200 like damn agencies everywhere and stuff like that. And you know, they both, boy, they both loaded with money. Okay. Um, but nonetheless, you know, um, we know Kyle was putting up with, sh okay, <laughs> point blank period. And so Erica, you know, brought up like that because Kyle was like, you know, I wish it was just like one thing that I could point to and say, well, this is the reason like we're divorcing, but she's like, it's not, it's just like, it's just us too, because everybody's like, oh, it's affair. It's just like this, it's infidelity. Like she's like, it's none of that. And so that's the hard part. And then not only that, it's like, you also have to, I know for a lot of women too, it's hard breaking up with the idea of what you thought your life was going to look like and also the expectations of other people and so you know Erica basically let her know like release yourself of that like go on and be happy whatever that looks like for you you know and that is a huge thing too because you know when it comes to marriages is marriages marriages a lot of the times they would stay together they always are on the fact of the woman you know leaving and so it's also the thing of like she was covering up for basically how bad it was for her daughter so when the headline came out she's worried about like the ramifications and all Mauricio's thinking who 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 leaked it who leaked it I think it was one of them too I think it was one of them too I think it, it had to be one of them too because they're ready to stop living the lie one and Mauricio either knew Kyle wouldn't do it because Kyle was hanging on y'all for, for dear life. You could like, she was hanging on for dear life. And I think either Mauricio thought she never would actually fully take the jump because Mauricio, he over it and Kyle over it. But Kyle, maybe she also, you know, had her, you know, incentive to do it because she, um, maybe it would like push her to finally, you know, come forward and say, you know, what was up between them so yeah um and Kyle basically was crying and then after that we see her and Mauricio you know have to talk to the daughters which was a very you know real real scene uh probably one of the more emotional scenes that we've seen on you know a housewife show um she sit down with the girls but this is where Kyle definitely showed um her kind of 
struggling. You saw her having this internal battle because when the girls asked her, like, so what does this mean for y'all? Kyle was like, well, you know, we'll take a break. And like, literally two of the daughters was like, what do you mean? So like, you say the separation is not a thing, but y'all want to take space from each other. Like, how's that supposed to work? And Kyle was like, well, you know, it, it's just like, you know, we'll take space. And, you know, if that doesn't work, then, you know, we just, you know, we'll go from there. But if, if it does work, like Kyle just couldn't say like, like sit there and admit like the separation already was up. Like it, it, it was time for divorce with them. And so like, it really just was hard to watch that y'all. And then the youngest daughter, she starts crying because she's literally the only one left in the house. Portia's 15. So she's getting ready to be out of there. And so that was a, a, like a hard thing to see. Mauricio, you know, he's got the agency. He's gone literally every month. And so to sit there and expect that your wife is just going to be there. And we know why he out, you know, he effing around while he on these Hawaii, Cambodia, Mexico, all these different ass places like and then Kyle, she uh, even uh, copped to something in the confession because they asked her like, oh, you know, what was it that made you, you know, question it or whatever? She was like, you know, there were some things that, you know, made me uh, no longer trust. And it's like, OK, the, what, we know what you get in that, Kyle. Like you lose trust by what? Fucking around. So it's just kind of like we knew what was up, Kyle. Um, but nonetheless, you guys. Um, that was Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Y'all tell me what you think about the season. Um, how you guys feel about Anne Marie as the new addition to the show. Y'all actually, I know it's going to sound crazy, but I actually think Anne Marie is a cooker. As in, I think we need to give her one more season because she's annoying, but she's annoying in the way of being a strong, like being headstrong in the wrong direction. So that's going to cause good TV. Um, and, um, Crystal, I don't know about Crystal. I really actually do like Crystal. And that's the thing. Like, I actually really do like Crystal. She and Marie are kind of similar in a way, like they're headstrong in the wrong direction. And so that makes good TV. <laughs> um, and so yeah, y'all, the reunion, Dorit can go though. Dorit can go. Y'all, the reunion is up next. I really feel like it's going to be good, but y'all stay tuned. Appreciate you for watching. Bye.